Come right in. Thank you for joining us today for Missouri City's 2014 State of the City. Uh, I'd like to ask you to go ahead and take your seat. And uh, as we begin here, I, I hope you enjoyed the entertainment as you came in. Uh, Dominique Jordan on the flute and the Fort Bend Academy of Arts and Dance. Uh, I hope you got to enjoy that as you were coming in this morning. My name is Glenn Smith, and I have the privilege of chairing the Board of Directors for the Fort Bend Chamber of Commerce. And on behalf of the Chamber and the City of Missouri City, I'd like to welcome each of you. This is a great turnout. Uh, a little bit of a rowdy bunch here this morning, but uh, great turnout. So thank you for being here. Uh, we're glad you're here. I want to take a moment and thank our presenting sponsor, the Mueller Law Group and particularly Rich Mueller here. Thank you so much for being our presenting sponsor today. I also want to thank our underwriting sponsors, the City of Missouri City, Houston Community College, Jones and Carter Incorporated, Johnson Development, Niagara Water, and TBG Partners. Join me in thanking them. This joint presentation today is part of the Fort Bend Chamber of Commerce's effort to work closely with business and local government to bring you valuable information that impacts our region and our community, uh, and our, also our economy. Uh, and I'd like to ask the Board of Directors, the Division Chairs, and the Chairman Circle for the Fort Bend Chamber, if you're here, would you please stand where you are so we can recognize you? All right, several folks here. And then uh, we have a number of elected officials here with us today, and uh, many, I, I don't even have everyone's name, but I'd like to ask all of our elected officials, if you are here with us, would you stand so we can recognize you? Thank you. Thank you very much. These men and women serve in our local, state, and federal uh, government branches, and so thank you for your service and all you contribute to our our community. Now the Missouri City Joint Police and Fire Honor Guard will present the colors. I'd like to ask you to stand with me as they come. States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Order. this morning to invite uh, Russ Clark to the stage to lead us in our national anthem. Stripes and bright stars 
through the perilous fight. O'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming. When the rockets bring the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave for the land of the free and the For you to remain standing at this time, we want to welcome Pastor Charles Murphy from Heritage Baptist Church. Pastor Murphy's going to come and give the invocation for us today. Would you bow your heads with me, please? Our Heavenly Father, as we approach your throne of grace, we come with humble hearts, thanking you for the many blessings of life that you give to us each and every day. And Father, we thank you for this meeting today and all of these people who support the cities and the county. We just pray, God, that these each group will be brought closer together, that we might work together to make this county, this city, and all the cities of this county better for each and every one. Thank you for their hard work. We ask your special blessings upon them. Thank you for the sponsors and bless them. Forgive us when we fail you and use us in your service. These things we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. I want to encourage you to enjoy your lunch and the fellowship around the tables. There will be a short video in a few moments. And then in a little bit, I'll be introducing Mayor Owen to present to us today. Now, I want to just go right into it's my pleasure today to introduce our uh, beloved mayor here, Mayor Alan Owen. And uh, if you know Mayor Owen, he's a uh, He's quite a golfer, and we appreciate his support and involvement in the Fort Bend Golf Tournaments. And uh, uh, I, I just uh, I understand he's uh, he's quite a good golfer. So uh, I can I can get the stories on that later, I'm sure. But uh, Mayor Owen, thank you so much for your work and the service to our community. Please come and share with us the state of the city. Thank you, Glenn. God, what a crowd. Gonna say, he's back. <laughs> and I, I want to first thank uh, Rich Muller, not Mueller, <laughs> Rich Muller and his firm for being our major sponsor. Give him a big hand. <laughs> but before I get in real trouble, I want to thank my wife, who's here for allowing me to uh, run for office 15 different times. And if you, for those elected officials in this room, once is enough, 15 times is too much. Uh, but you have to have a, a spouse or a partner that supports you when you run for office because it gets a little hairy sometimes. So I want to thank her for being here. I want to thank the Chamber for putting these events on, but I think it's important that all of us in the county learn about our different cities. And let me just say that uh, I saw a deal yesterday that uh, I guess Commissioner Morrison sent me that showed that every city, every city, 16 of them, 
had positive population growth this past year. Yeah. I'm not sure that there's another county in the United States where every city in the county had positive growth. So that says a lot for our county and uh, for what, what they're doing and what we're here about. But uh, anyway, I want to first of all thank our major sponsors, and I'm not going to not going to neglect those at the bottom of the program. I encourage you to turn the program over on the back. But uh, our uh, major sponsors: HCC, Johnson Carter, Johnson Development, Niagara Water, TBG Landscape. Those are our underwriting sponsors, and then, like I said, our other sponsors. So give our sponsors a big hand. They they support us. You know, I, I have to say that any mayor's job cannot be done without having a, a great team of people that work with them. Uh, those being known as council people or commissioners and uh, have a great group of people here. Uh, and uh, i got to remember to do this, Donna Stacy. I have some of my council people here and I'd like to introduce them and have them stand. Jerry White. Jerry and I have been around longer than we probably should have been. John Smith. Floyd Emery. Yolanda Ford. Now where's Robin? Robin with Methodist, okay. He's sitting with his employer. I'm not sure if our new uh, city council person Chris Preston, I don't know if he's here or not. You are Chris Wade, but uh, he's probably still learning what he needs to be doing. <laughs> we do have other elected officials, and I, I know that many of them stood before, but I, I want to point them out because, you know, we work together in this county as elected officials to make it uh, successful. And I know we've got State Representative Ron Reynolds. Where are you? Ron, back here. And Lovelace Mitchell here representing Senator Rodney Ellis' office. There he is right over there. Uh, KP George, newly elected school board member. KP, where are you? Right over here. Yes. Trail James, our new school board president. I can't the light line. Any of the other school board members over there? Jason's here somewhere. Nice. Yeah, oh, Jim Rice, Jim. Yeah. Yes, okay. Stand up back there. Yeah, Chris. I know we've got uh, three of our county commissioners here. Commissioner Morrison's here, Commissioner Patterson's here, and Commissioner Prestige is here. Where are you? There they are. Over here. In big hand. And then some of my fellow mayors are here. Uh, I know that uh, Mayor Jessup's here. Charlie, where is Meadows Place? We elected uh, Mayor Evelyn Moore from Richmond. She was back here in the back. We've got uh, Constable Reuben Davis. Constable Reuben somewhere back in there. We have Ron Service here representing uh, Harris County Judge Emmett. Where's Ron? Ron, thank you for coming. Then I think we have all of Sugarland here, don't we? We have all of Sugarland, Mayor of Sugarland Council. Would y'all stand? No post this as a meeting. <laughs> Guys, thank you for coming. I know we have a couple of Rosenberg City Council people, Dwayne Gregory and Jim Pena. Where are you all? They're back. All right, guys, we're over here. Well, we got all the good stuff out of the way. I will say that Senator Huffman uh, was going to be here, and she was one of our sponsors, and she got called to Fort Worth early on. But I will say this. Senator Huffman wanted to make sure that her table was filled, but she wanted it filled with police and firefighters. And they're right over here. And we put them closest to the door in case they have to leave. Because they do call away from time to time. But uh, anyway, guys, it's great that you're here. And, and if you did not hear this uh, presentation that uh, was here earlier, uh, it will be on our website. You can watch that, uh, and I encourage you to do so. Uh, but uh, as you saw, our story is one that features diversity. 
Rice University said last year in a report that Missouri City was the most diverse city in, in the region. That's more than Houston. So we're very proud of our diversity. And every day our city officials and staff members collaborate to provide excellent services to our citizens, businesses, and our stakeholders. Utilizing strategic policies and goals, city leaders adhere to an alignment to achievement approach, thereby ensuring continuous progress across all of our operations, including our public safety, our physical management, our infrastructure improvements, our economic development initiative, park programs, and citizens outreach programs. With a cohesive focus on results, we all adhere to the following principles. Number one, city first. And the top priority for our 68, but now 70,000 Commissioner Morrison, which your report showed, seven elected city officials and over 300 employees, and I would like for those 300 employees to have a round of applause for what they do. Many of them are here. But they help us maintain the vibrant uh, Fort Bend community known for its rich legacy of history and tradition, robust commercial development, as you've seen in this presentation, dynamic diversity and excellence in education, thanks to our school board. Number two is communication. All forms must be clear, concise, and constructive, and regular objective feedback is also a key factor to ensure that all of our colleagues are on the same page at all times. Most of you in this room know that that's not easy to do. Some people are on a different page than we're on. Number three, collaboration. Partnering to enhance the city's strategic position in the region, state, and nation, world. Our leaders regularly join together to attain the four main objection strategies. To retain existing property values. And let me just stop there and say that not only have we seen an increase in population, I think what the judge told me not long ago is that across Fort Bend County we've seen a 7% positive increase in property valuation. I know that we've seen better than 10% here in Missouri City. And I, I recently asked uh, Wes Vela what that meant to us and I can tell you that a 10% increase in property values in Missouri City alone is over $500 million. So it means a great deal to us to see those property values come back. You're sitting in one of the reasons that I think those values came back. But we need, to, we need to increase our commercial development, which we've done a tremendous job in doing in our two industrial parks. With the help of Fort Bend EDC, WCNID number two in the county, those are our partners there. But we need to create value-added services, and we need to develop an organization of optimum performance, meaning that we need to be number one in what we do. Implementation of these principles creates an opportunity for all parties to participate in the administrative process and to consistently produce measurable results. And today I'm excited to share some of those Show Me City accomplishments from the past year that were made possible through our strong partnerships that I've mentioned. And many of you in this room are partners of ours. And they're not just customers, they're not just vendors who deal business with us, they're partners. You know, I look back over the many years and I see that, you know, one of the greatest partners that we took on, obviously, was Quail Valley. The next big step that I saw us take on as a partner was Sienna Plantation. And, and Larry and I were just talking, it's been, what, 18 years, a uh, long time coming that we started that, but we're proud of what's there today along with Riverstone and our other developments. Uh, but anyway, over the past year, more than 27 new retail and commercial industrial buildings have been completed. I said this earlier, uh, I think probably in an, another time that I was speaking, that within that same period of time, the new building completed added about a million and 37,000 square feet of commercial property that we didn't have before. You saw Benny Keith earlier. Benny Keith right now has... Uh, a little over 400,000 square feet in that distribution center. They're going to extend that to a million square feet. They are our largest single employer, and they will continue to do that. But, uh, you know, one of the things that uh, has taken place over this past couple of years is the development of both of those, uh, our, Lake, our Lakeview Business Park as well as our Beltway Crossing. And, and I think that a lot of that is because of its proximity, not only to the Beltway, but also to 90A, the port, and all the other things. You can still be close to Houston and not be there. 
but we've got new companies that are opening their doors along Highway 6 in the city. Discount Tire, Spear Emergency Room, Aldi has opened their new store. Bank of America has got a new office that's down there. Uh, we've got a lot of new stuff that's coming along Highway 6. But our big stuff is in there is in our Lakeview Business Park. Uh, and Lakeview Business Park basically is built out. Uh, Trammell Crow has been very successful in doing what they have done over there. And uh, we now have uh, companies like Bimbo Bakeries that distributes all of Mr. Beard's bread, rich food products, which is under construction right now as a new company. Uh, they've got 200,000 square feet of space that's over there, and they also distribute food products throughout the world. Allied Group uh, is expanding their office space to another 300,000 square feet. CNC Manufacturing is a new company. Niagara Botter, Bottling, and you saw uh, a deal that came up about Niagara. They're the largest family-owned private label manufacturer of bottled water in the United States. And they had their open house earlier this year and showed everybody their 357,000 square foot facility, which is amazing in that it's fully automated. And if you've not seen anything like that, to see a forklift coming down the aisle with a load of water on it and no driver on it, it's <laughs> kind of scary, but it is it's fully automated. And this particular plant, and it's one of seven they have in the United States, they make their own bottles and their own bottle caps and their own labels and then they bottle the water there in their plant. We're very happy with that and um, it, it's amazing, uh, but uh, they bottle 81,000 bottles of water an hour. 2.1 million and 2.5 million <coughs> bottles of water every day uh, to go out of there. So I'm drinking a lot of water. But along our South Gaster Cravens Road business corridor, which is over in the Beltway area, like I said, Benny Keith, uh, which one currently one has over 400,000 right square feet, is going to, three, going to over a million. Uh, we've got phase three uh, of the uh, center that's being built today. They are filling up those buildings as fast as they can build them. Toolmark uh, just completed their 38,000 square foot build out that they moved from Houston a Missouri City resident, by the way, who wanted to get closer to home, and we worked with them to, to get over here. Elsewhere around the city, we welcome Riverstone's office, uh, center of condo office park in Riverstone, Dance Works, which is a dance uh, school over on Knights Road, Safety America, Gymnastic Karate School over in Siena. And within this business growth, we've added more than a thousand new jobs. That's the most important thing about our industrial growth is that We've added those people who can live and work in Missouri City. And I know that the people in this room that are either selling houses, building houses, or developing houses are tickled to death to see that, as we are too. Uh, because that's what, what we're bringing them here for. You know, changes in population over the last year with, with the completion and opening of the Huntington, which you saw our newest senior retirement community, which many of us are going to end up in one of these days. <laughs> but there's been also 400 new housing units. Um, and, and, you know, a lot of our growth is happening in our ETJ. And uh, eventually that ETJ will be part of Missouri City. Uh, but, you know, based upon that growth, uh, we're projecting an addition of about 1,150 people within the city limits and another 2,500 in our ETJ. You know, we have a lot of changes that are happening along 90A. Uh, the Millis Development and Construction Group is building a new uh, office building over on 90A in Cravens. The company is locate, relocating its construction office and its storage, storage yard into a brand new two-story building which is great for us because it's reinvesting that property that has sat so long along the 98 corridor, as you've seen for a long time where Tang City was. We're now beginning to see some reinvestment. A lot of our fast food restaurants like Burger King and Wendy's are going in and redoing their uh, current existing shops and, and updating them to kind of bring them up to date and help with them. Hampton Inn, uh, which was our second hotel that's gone in over there, opened its doors, uh, and if you've not been over there, you need to go see it because it's a, it's a great facility, and 
Uh, it's equipped with a 3,000 square foot meeting room that can be divided up into three spaces and uh, it's done well. Uh, we do have a house of worship. Uh, the Holy Family is celebrating its 100th year anniversary in Missouri City and that's a long time for any church to be at one particular place but we're happy to be a part of that. You know you talk about development and, and the future Toll Brothers has recently purchased the uh, area that we've now finally known as Sienna South. And uh, they've begun development plans for construction of about 6,500 new homes uh, on about 3,700 acres of land. Uh, and it will be very similar to what you've seen Toll Brothers do in Riverstone and in other areas. So we're, we're very proud to have Riverstone uh, type development to take place along uh, in the back side of Sienna, back where our fire station number five, by the way, is getting ready to open. Uh, you know, we're looking for continued commercial development, again, with our partnership with both the county and EDC and WCNID number two. All of a sudden, we're becoming, and I thought I saw something on TV last night, it was just a blurb that we're talking about all the emergency rooms that are located along Highway 6. Did I not see some? Did y'all see that? Huh? So, and they are. I, I don't know why we've decided that Highway 6 is going to be the emergency corridor, that, <laughs> but it is. But Methodist getting ready to open their new facility out there, uh, their urgent care facility. Uh, I think you're supposed to be later this summer, right, guys? Huh? July 15th. July 15th. Very good. Uh, they've got a 9,600 square foot uh, center located there at Sienna between you know, Sienna and Riverstone areas to serve those. Uh, they'll house 10 treatment rooms and obviously the latest technology and the, dynamic, uh, the diagnostic imaging equipment. Right, Robin? Not they'll blame you. <laughs> Not to take them on that. Memorials also. Uh, Memorials building uh, their 23,000 square foot emergency clinic to be located out there. So I don't know what it is about Highway 6, but uh, it's the emergency corridor. Uh, we've got uh, a new storage facility that's going on out there. Uh, one of the things that I think is going to continue to be important to Missouri City, as well as the Anna Riverstone and all that area, is the recent opening of the tow road that goes from Sienna Parkway over and all the way. And I told someone yesterday, I said, you can literally get on the Fort Bend tow road at Sienna Parkway, and the first stoplight is 610 and 98. So that means that you can be in the medical center in 15 minutes. And I know that a lot of the people who buy homes in Missouri City, especially in that area, uh, work in the medical center and that's very important for them to do that. So, But as you can see, our business partners are essential to the city's future and we look to, for that to continue. Uh, beyond the economy, the city has marked numerous other milestones, which I'm very proud of. And one of those is the fact that not only do our citizens understand the importance of uh, infrastructure rehabilitation, they voted for it in this last election when we had a $40 million bond issue on the, on the books and uh, voted for it to do $6.5 million in drainage improvements, $5.7 million to our public facilities that are desperately in need of doing some improvements to. Five million of that is for the construction of fire station number five, uh, which is gonna be very important to those people who live in the backside of Sienna, uh, which will eventually be part of Missouri City as it is. But we're doing that with the partnership with the MUDs uh, and the Sienna developers down there, and we're very thankful for that. But the largest piece of our bond issue, over half of it, $22.8 million, is infrastructure for streets and sidewalks. When you think about Quail Valley, Quail Valley is 40 years old. Concrete streets wear out uh, and they have to be replaced. You can only patch them so long before they need to be completely redone. We had a bond committee of citizens that we put together that over a number of months began to meet and decide what their priorities were as far as this bond issue was concerned, keeping in mind that we did not want a tax increase. That's difficult to do, but we also knew that 
Uh, we needed to find a way to do what we could do without putting any more tax burden on people and, and absorb what we could do within five years. So, you know, they came up with a long laundry list of more things than we could do. But then with staff, we began to trim that down and come up with a number that we felt like that one, our team could accomplish in five years, and two, that we could absorb without taking on any tax increases for the citizen. And uh, that bond committee uh, did an excellent job of putting together what, what I think was the most successful bond issue with, we've done as far as the city is concerned. Not everybody was happy. There was opposition to the bonds, as there always is. But that's the way bond issues are sometimes. Uh, you know, I, I made a comment earlier this year that I think there were 16 cities in Texas who had bond issues on the ballot in May. 54 school districts had bond issues on the ballot in May. So bond issues were a big thing this time throughout the state of Texas. And you look at Cy Fair and they passed a $1.2 billion, would a beat, dollar bond issue for new schools. Uh, you knew that it was important that our, our citizens understand that our people sat down and determined what was best for the citizens and we, we can't do it all. And I can tell you that throughout the four districts within the city, that money got spread equally and there's a little bit going on all over the city rather than taking one area of the city and doing it moving on. There's a piece in it for everybody. And we, you've got to do that when you have a bond issue. Everybody has to feel like there's something in it for them for it to pass. So, But in addition to the referendum, we're proud to announce that as part of our proactive crime prevention measures, we've established a police motorcycle unit. And we have bought those motorcycles. You know, there was a comment made, I understand, on a recent blog that we hadn't bought motorcycles. Well, yes, I can assure you, we bought five motorcycles. And we have police officers that are in Arizona right now training. Most of those guys have their own motorcycle, but they're in Arizona doing some special training now, and we will have those guys on the street next month. Right, Ed? Probably actually a couple weeks. Probably in a couple of weeks. They'll be hiding. <laughs> Yeah, that's, you, you might have an opportunity to get a ticket this month. <laughs> They'll be hiding in those places that you can't see. But, you know, what was important about our, our motorcycle units, and, and I've been here long enough, guys, we've talked about motorcycle units for a long time, haven't we, Jerry? Everybody kept putting them off, putting them off, putting them off. But, you know, as the city has grown, when you look at the major thoroughfares like Highway 6 and Texas Parkway and... Cartwright, 1092, uh, when you have this many people moving, you're going to have more and more accidents, unfortunately. And when we take a patrol car and one of our patrol officers off of or out of the subdivision to work a wreck, and they're there for an hour and a half, two hours, uh, it's not the best use of our officer's time. So these motorcycle units are going to help us mitigate traffic situations. They're going to be you know, working those accidents on those major thoroughfares, they're going to be regulating speed and doing those things that I know Sugar Land's been, they've had their units for some time, the county has had theirs, so uh, just be, uh, be aware, they're out there, or will be out there, so. But again, I said we're moving towards opening our fire station number five, which will serve the backside of Sienna. I, you know, I get concerned when I see situations that uh, that happened in the last two years uh, where you've had major fires in, in areas of the state. I get concerned that when you look at Sienna, which is heavily forested, there's only one way in and one way out, that we have a problem in the back of the front of Sienna, uh, and the people in the back are not able to get out. So we need to make sure that we've got uh, fire protection back there. And let me just say that you know, Sienna and the city are in this together as a partner. As I said, they're not in the city limits, but people in Sienna pay for that fire service through their money, and they're reimbursed, uh, they reimburse the city. So it's not like we're doing something for Sienna that we're not doing for the rest of the citizens. We've, we've always had a great partnership back there. But anyway, and we're also looking within the next five years, hopefully, of opening fire station number six which will be 
somewhere in the area behind Lake Olympia, uh, which will give us that coverage that we so dearly need for that. Uh, our first uh, first class public amenities continues to see significant gain both here at the city center as far as our tennis and rec center, which we're very proud of. Uh, our award-winning uh, golf course recorded a 16% increase in tournament rounds over the past year. It was the host to the Texas Golf Association South Regional Four Ball Tournament, and it's still one of only three first tee facilities in the Houston area that we're proud of. And these kids that are coming through this first tee program are outstanding young people, and we want to continue to to build on that. Uh, we're still financially sound, I'll have to say, and that's not true of a lot of cities today. Our, fina our finance department once again earned the accolades from the Government Finance Officers Association of the United States and Canada for the city budget and comprehensive annual financial report. And this was the 25th year in a row that they've been awarded that recognition. We partnered with our friends in Stafford um, and I'm not, I, don't, I didn't see any of our Stafford people here, but uh, we built an animal shelter together. Uh, it's one, we've had an animal shelter for some time, and we were sharing that animal shelter with Stafford, but we both had outgrown that one facility and it needed to be upgraded. So again, talking about partnerships, we go to Stafford and say, guys, let's build a animal shelter that we can share uh, knowing that at some point in time, as they continue to grow, and as we continue to grow, they'll need to build their own. But for right now, the cost of that animal shelter was spread 25% by Stafford and 75% by City of Missouri City. So we regulate that to make sure we only take in 25% of their dogs. <laughs> you know, once our... One of our subdivisions that was probably here long before most of the people in this room, Bondron Park, is celebrating its 50th anniversary this year. Uh, it doesn't seem like it's been that long ago, but I know my wife and I can remember because we've been married for 47 years. But uh, when we were looking for houses one time, I can remember driving down Bondron, which at that time was a dirt road, from Gracewood to 98. It was a dirt road to look at houses in uh, Bondren Park, and it's amazing to know that this year uh, it's 50 years old. And, you know, the, the unusual thing about Bondren Park and Fond Meadow is in Harris County. Then the city of Missouri City, they go to Houston IS, they go to Houston schools. So they're really confused when it comes time to vote. <laughs> Because they get to vote in a lot of elections. They just don't get to vote in uh, Fort Bend's election. They don't get to vote in Fort Bend ISD's election. So, but anyway, they, uh, they're 50 years old. So as you can see, partnerships are a capstone for us. And the most important is the one we share with our citizens. And uh, again, I'm very proud that the citizens, uh, in their infinite wisdom, asked me to serve uh, as the leader of this city for another term. Uh, as you see, you know, uh, we have a senior planning council uh, that advises the staff on programs and events, many of what you saw there. Missouri City is an aging city. Uh, it's people that have lived here for 50 years are still here. Uh, we're now beginning to see their children come into this city and, and want to stay here. But those citizens are also instrumental in the success of, the, of our premier parks program. Our code enforcement initiatives which help keep our communities among the best in the nation. We have a new community garden uh, that's in the Buffalo Run Park. Uh, this is a partnership that we did with uh, a lot of number of people and they're growing fresh vegetables uh, over there in that garden that they're going to share with uh, the community. But you know what? Missouri City and all of our partners are accountable and responsible for the city staying on its course. And uh, equally required is all of us being fully engaged to ensure that the sustainability of the Show Me City's vast social, economic, political, and educational and cultural wealth, the future is our scenic city depends on it. I want to thank you all for coming today. I know that many of you probably had other things to do other than come hear me talk about 
something that I'm very passionate about, and that's the future of this city. You know, people ask me sometimes, why do I do what I do? Why do I serve, you know, why do I serve what I serve? And I've told this once before and many other times that I thought God put me on this earth to serve other people. Now, my wife says that's taking it a little too far sometimes, but, <laughs> but I truly believe that, and, and as long as I'm physically, mentally able to do it, and the citizens of Missouri City want me and the rest of our council to continue to do what we've been doing and being one of the best cities in the United States to call home, one of the safest cities in the United States, thanks to these guys in this corner over here. And let me just say that, you know, a couple of weeks ago, uh, this city went through a tough time. Uh, you know, we had a police officer that uh, fortunately is recovering today who was uh, injured in, a, in an accident where a drunk driver ran into the back of the patrol car and uh, he jumped to get out of the way, not knowing that the jump was 30 feet down. Uh, ruptured his aorta, fractured his pelvic, ruptured his uh, colon. But I will say that he's back home today uh, recovering. Hopefully he will be back uh, in, in position. We had pinned him two days prior to that. And he was with his field training officer that night. But later that same day, our assistant police chief, husband was killed in a motorcycle accident. So it was, a, it was a tough time for us, you know, as a family. But we made it, and we're here today, and I want to thank you all for coming today, too. Thank you. We got you know, Ross and Thank you very much, Mayor Owen. We appreciate your leadership, your vision. As we all know, Mayor Owen has served this community well for many years as we look forward to the, the coming year and the days ahead. Thank you so much. You know, Missouri City is a model of partnerships, as the mayor has said, a model for the entire nation. And so thank you all for your part in that as uh, community leaders and business leaders. We uh, want to remind you that we have some upcoming events uh, for Missouri City. On Thursday, June the 12th, there will be a leadership luncheon. Precinct 2 Commissioner Grady Prestige will uh, present on upcoming county projects. That will be at 11.30 a.m. here at City Center. On Saturday, June 14th, electronics recycling event will be taking place from 8 o'clock till noon at the Public Safety Headquarters on Cartwright Road. And for the Chamber, on uh, June 13th, the State of Higher Education Luncheon at the Sweetwater Country Club will be taking place, and we encourage you and invite you to be a part of, of those wonderful events. Before we wrap up, we do have some door prizes, and Mayor Owen, I'd like to ask you if you would come help me. a beautiful gift from HEB and it has a gift card in addition to the beautiful basket oh and so I'm going to ask the mayor if he would to draw a card and let's find out who is the winner of this wonderful gift today. John Benavides? John? John, right back here. Come get this. Congratulations. We have five different sets of tickets to Skeeter's games that we want to give away. This is compliments of Todd Fawcett with Republic Services. Thank you, Todd. This gift is going to Noe Almaguer. Noe, right here. And we have another one to give to... Juan Rodriguez, Juan. Where are you, Juan? Right here. And we.
we have another one to give to Amber Ainsworth. Amber. Amber Ainsworth. Where are you, Amber? Right here. Come on down. And another to give to Jared Shoemaker. Jared? Right here. Come on down, Jared. One more. And we have one more to give away to Robert Maxwell. Robert? Robert, right over here. And then another very nice gift here from the city of Missouri City that we want to give away. And this gift will go to Rachel Hernseer. Rachel. thing at this time I'd like to acknowledge that these beautiful flowers on the table have been provided today compliments from flowers by Adela and at each table I'd like for you to ask around before you leave and find out who has a birthday closest to today it could be yesterday or it could be today or tomorrow if you're at each table ask around your table and the person with the closest birthday will receive this uh, as a gift today and everyone, enjoy the gift bag from the Missouri City, uh, City of Missouri City. What is that? Thank you everyone for joining us today.